when it was all over, Harvard's 1964 football team had done better than most of the experts predicted, but it took a great comeback by the Crimson squad to make the season a success. Plagued by a series of injuries to key personnel almost from the first day of practice, Harvard's young football team was slow to develop, and midway through the season, it suffered a shocking 48 to nothing defeat at the hands of Dartmouth. But coach John Yavison and his squad picked up the pieces, won three of the last four games, and crowned the year with an 18 to 14 victory over Yale. That final triumph gave the Crimson second place in the Ivy race behind champion Princeton. Now let's watch the highlights of the Crimson's sixth consecutive winning season under Yavison's leadership. The Crimson faced a stiff opening test from the University of Massachusetts, which was unscored on in nine straight games, including an opener with Maine the previous week. A tremendous team performance limited the heroics of the Redmen's stellar Jerry Welchel and produced a great victory to open Yavison's eighth season. Harvard got moving in the first quarter and moved inside the UMass 10. Pat Conway plows through right guard for six. And one play later becomes the first ball carrier to penetrate the Massachusetts goal line in nine games. The point was good and Harvard led seven to nothing. Harvard had the ball once more as the second quarter began. On the second play of the series, quarterback John McCluskey goes 83 yards with a big block from Stan Yastrzemski for the second Crimson touchdown. The score was Harvard 14, Massachusetts nothing. The Redmen began to move in the third quarter. The passing and running of quarterback Jerry Welchel brings them to the Harvard goal line. Jerry Meckling finally makes the tackle. And Welchel bucks over on fourth down for the score. Harvard led 14 to 6. Massachusetts got the ball right back and Welchel takes to the air once more. First to Milt Morin. Then again this time to Bob Meir. Ken Palm hits left guard for three yards. And then Welchel bootlegs into the end zone. His pass to Milt Morin adds two points. And the score was Harvard 14, Massachusetts 14. Harvard took the kick and marches to the UMass goal line. Dave Poe carries on this play. But John McCluskey, rolling out, rejoices too soon, and the Redmen have the ball. Harvard bounces right back with Tom Villado in place of the injured McCluskey. Walt Grant carries here. And Dave Poe climaxes a 38-yard march by smashing over from the 13. The point after touchdown was no good, but the Crimson defense held, and Hybrid had a stunning victory, 20 to 14. The Bucknell Bisons moved into the stadium, fresh from an opening loss, and proceeded to give Hybrid a miserable afternoon on defense. Bill Lero's passes overcame a good Crimson offensive performance, and Hybrid suffered an unexpected defeat. Harvard starts fast, moving deep into Bucknell territory on its first series of downs. Walt Grant steps out of bounds on the 26th after an 18-yard run. Grant hits Dave Poe on Grant's first pass of his football career. The point was good, and Harvard led 7 to nothing. 
Bucknell came back following a Harvard fumble as Bill Lero completes the first of many passes. The Bison settle for a field goal, making the score. Harvard, seven. Bucknell, three. The second quarter belonged to the Bisons as Bill Lero continues to show a deft passing touch. Bill Coons plunges for the touchdown. The point was good. Bucknell forged ahead, 10 to 7. Lero is on target, hitting Ron Kinsey for a long gain. And five plays later, fires a strike to Tom Mitchell. Bucknell led, 17 to 7. It was Tom Billado's turn to put the ball in the air in the third quarter. Billado hits Walt Grant on this one. And two plays later, he finds Bobby Leo for six points on a fake field goal. Bucknell 17, Harvard 14. After a Bucknell fumble, Harvard storms into the lead as Pat Conway gains 10 yards on this play. And Billado passes to Leo for a touchdown. Harvard 21, Bucknell 17. Bucknell strikes back on Lero's passes. This one to Tom Mitchell. Setting up the touchdown toss to Ron Kinsey. With most of the fourth quarter left to play, Bucknell led 24-21. Harvard kept trying, but a last-ditch pass from Villado to Pete Hall fails, and the final score was Bucknell 24, Harvard 21. The preliminaries were over, and the Ivy season was at hand. Harvard sought anxiously to find a pass defense to stop the Lions' Archie Roberts and succeeded perfectly, but the offense sputtered badly. A last-minute drive finally produced some points, and Harvard had its first Ivy win. There was a bad omen for the Lions on their first play from scrimmage. Roberts to Klingen Smith, complete. But for an 11-yard loss, Frank Sikas makes the tackle. Then Sikas, a tiger all afternoon, hits Archie behind the line. And the Crimson kept it up throughout the game. The Columbia defense was ready and willing, too. Jack Strouk dumped Walt Grant for a 7-yard loss. Roberts opens the second quarter with a third down scamper for 27 yards to the Harvard 29. But that turned out to be the Lions' deepest penetration, and Jim Bashar's field goal attempt is short. John Dockery makes one of his many fine kick returns. Neither defense would budge until Harvard took over on its own 45 with one minute and 50 seconds to play. Dockery makes nine yards on a reverse. Then Tom Billado hits Dockery for 14 yards. A five-yard penalty failed to halt the Crimson as Billado finds Dockery again, this time for 12. And then Billado flips one to Walt Grant for four yards and the first down. Harvard goes for the marbles on first and ten. John Dockery makes the catch. 
but he's ruled out of bounds. Another pass failed, but on third and ten, Frank Osikas makes a spectacular grab of a Billado toss at the three-yard line. The Crimson used two plays, moving the ball to the center of the field. Then sophomore Mari DeLay splits the uprights for his first varsity field goal. There were 15 seconds left when the kick went through, and Harvard had its first Ivy win. Jupiter Pluvius was in the stands for the Cornell game. As the rain poured down and the wind whistled through the stadium, the brakes went to the Crimson, and with them, the ball game. Second half heroics garnered Harvard its second league win in as many tries. Poor conditions caused miscues all afternoon. Walt Grant's fumble sets up Cornell on the Crimson 16. But Harvard's defense holds. Joe Jurek leads the charge to stop this play. George Aranjo's field goal attempt fails, and the Crimson have survived the first bad break. Late in the opening quarter, quarterback Marty Sponagel moved the Big Red from their own 29 to the Harvard 24, but Bob Barrett picks off a pass to stop that threat. In the second quarter, Cornell started at their own five and rolled down the field. Sponagel to Fullerton for 14 yards and a first down. Harvard finally dug in at the Crimson 22 and another field goal try falls short. Score at the half, Harvard nothing. Cornell, nothing. As the third quarter opened, the breaks began to go for the Crimson. A bad Cornell center pass ends on the Cornell four. Pat Conway was stopped three times, but on fourth down, he squirts off tackle for the touchdown. The kick failed. Harvard, six. Cornell, nothing. Later in the period, Jim Driscoll wins the battle for a Sponagel fumble on the Cornell 23. This time, Harvard settles for a Mari Delay field goal, and the Crimson had a 9 to nothing lead. Late in the quarter, Cornell had more trouble trying to punt. Ken Boyda makes the tackle. But the Big Red was too tough this time. Ratner leads the charge to stop Conway on fourth down. As the last seconds of the game ticked away, a Sponagel to Baker pass brings Cornell to the Crimson goal line. Sponagel tries another pass. But John Dockery is there to intercept it. He takes off like a speedboat up the sideline. And crosses the goal line 104 yards from where he caught the ball. The clock read 14.59. Final score. Hybrid 16. Cornell nothing. The Indians came whooping out of the hills with their usual aspect of fierceness, but a trouncing at the hands of Princeton seemed to indicate that they were less bloodthirsty than usual. The Crimson entered the game a slight underdog with hopes high for another win over the green. The weather was perfect, and the festive crowds didn't suspect that they were about to witness Dartmouth's greatest victory in the series. John McCluskey opened at quarterback and loses seven yards on the first play of the game. Dartmouth went 60 yards for a touchdown, the first chance it got. Gottschall to Clark for the score. Nothing went right for the Crimson all day. Here, Dave Poe drops a McCluskey pass.
The Big Green opens the second quarter by blocking Jerry Meckling's punt. And they had 35 points on the board by halftime. Bob O'Brien makes it 14 to nothing off right tackle. The Indians block another punt. And Gottschall throws his second touchdown pass. This time to Bryant. Dartmouth 21, Harvard nothing. Tom Bilodeau came on at quarterback and gets the same rude treatment as his predecessor. Dartmouth took the ball right back and this time it's Paul Klungness's turn to score. Harvard nothing. Now it's Ray Kubacki's turn to be quarterback. The Indians' Jan Lumi picks off a deflected pass just to prove the Green weren't playing favorites. Now Mickey Beard shows that he can pass too. Klungness's catch makes the score at halftime. Dartmouth 35, Harvard nothing. Harvard fans kept hoping, but the cavalry never came. Final score, Dartmouth 48, Harvard nothing. The Crimson were still dazed from their acute case of big green sickness in the first half of the Penn game, but the second half saw a complete recovery as Harvard's legions buried the hapless Quakers under an avalanche of touchdowns. Penn started as they finished, going nowhere. Paul Guzzi dumps Penn's workhorse, Bruce Malloy, for a four-yard loss on the first play of the game. Harvard's attack sputtered until a Malloy quick kick is short, giving Harvard the ball on the Penn 32. Six plays later, Walt Grant bursts over from the four. The kick was good, and Harvard left the field at halftime, leading seven to nothing. Another Malloy punt was short. And Tom Bilodeau quickly finds Frank Osikas all alone for a touchdown. Harvard, 14, 10, nothing. After an exchange of punts, Bilodeau gets the Crimson on the move again by hitting Dockery for 12 yards. Harvard rolled on down the field. Bilodeau pitches a near miss to Franco Sickert. And then caps the drive as Dockery makes a great catch of a Bilodeau pass. Hybrid 21, Pennsylvania nothing. The Crimson kept pressing in the fourth quarter. Steve Diamond recovers a pen fumble on the opening play. With Jerry Meckling at the helm, Harvard moves for the score. Dockery going over from the five. Harvard, 27. Penn, nothing. The Harvard defense never let up on Bruce Malloy. Hit here for a five-yard loss by Pete Hall. The next play sends Wally Grant around right end on a double reverse.
32 yards later, he goes out of bounds on the eighth. That penalty moved the ball to the four. And Jerry Meckling hits pay dirt on his third sneak up the middle. Final score, Harvard, 34, Pennsylvania, nothing. After the strong showing against Penn, there was hope as Hybrid headed south for the annual Tiger Hunt. Crimson defenders reacted like the French at Verdun to stem the Princeton Blitz, but Hybrid's offensive never got out of the trenches. A fluke touchdown and three field goals produced Princeton's seventh victory and Hybrid's second Ivy defeat. Tom Bilodeau's pass on third and one is incomplete on the first series of the game. Princeton took over, got stalled by a penalty, and tries a quick kick. Paul Savage makes the break the Tigers were looking for, and the score was Princeton 7, Harvard nothing. Harvard kept trying, but Princeton held in the clutch. Hackett stops Conway, short of a first down. The Crimson had third down miseries all day. Here, Ron Landek downs Jerry Meckling at the line of scrimmage with third down and two yards to go. Princeton has Cosmo Yakavazi. And a passing attack when they need it. Landek to Lawson Cash Dollar on third down. This drive started on the Princeton 12, and just when it seems the Crimson had held on the five, Charlie Gogolak boots a field goal. And it was Princeton 10, hybrid nothing at halftime. Harvard stopped the Tigers at the start of the third quarter, but Stas Malashevsky intercepts a Bilodeau pass on the Harvard 42. Harvard held at the 23, but Gogolak splits the uprights again, and Princeton led 13 to nothing. Princeton controlled the ball in the fourth quarter with the kangaroo play by Yakavazi. and short passes to Pizzarello, the blocking back. Gogolak frosts the Tiger cake with his third field goal with 10 seconds left in the game. Final score, Princeton 16, Harvard nothing. The Bruins arrived in Cambridge licking their wounds from several close defeats. A powerful rush and good coverage kept Brown's passing under control and the Crimson unleashed some more last-minute fireworks to make the scoreboard show the difference between the team. Harvard stopped the Bruins after the opening kickoff. Starting at their own 12, John McCluskey marches the Crimson down the field. McCluskey, bothered by an injury since a brilliant showing against UMass, flashes some of his old form. With third and one on the brown one, McCluskey goes over for the score. And Hybrid was off to a seven to nothing lead. Jim Dunda fired up the Bruins in the second quarter. His pass to O'Toole gains 20 yards. Two plays later, he hits John Hutchinson over the middle. And Hutchinson legs it the rest of the way for a touchdown. Hybrid seven, Brown seven. Late in the second half, Wally Grant gathers in a Brown punt at the Brown 49. and steps out of bounds on the 12.
Pat Conway is stopped behind the line on third down. So with 23 seconds left in the half, Maury DeLay kicks a 26-yard field goal, and Harvard left the field leading 10-7. The Harvard offense stalled in the second half, but the defense stopped the Bruins cold. Jim Driscoll makes a stop behind the line. Good coverage and a strong rush throttled Brown passing. Steve Diamond dumps Dunder for a seven-yard loss. Brown had one last chance with a minute to go, but Dave Davis forces a fumble, pushing Brown back to its own four-yard line. A penalty moved the ball to the two, where Paul Barringer streaks into the end zone to drop Dunder for a safety. Harvard 12, Brown 7. Brown chose to punt on the ensuing free kick, but Walt Grant ruins the strategy. He goes 82 yards for a touchdown. points in the last 15 seconds give Harvard a 19 to 7 victory. A chill and wintry sun peering down at the game joined the sellout crowd in watching the finest afternoon of Harvard football in 1964. The defense was good but the offense was amazing as new faces and old standbys combined to rip the blue and dash poor Eli's hopes for the fifth time in seven years. Dan Yastrzemski begins the assault on the Eli in the first quarter, leading a hybrid march into Yale territory. From the Yale 19, John McCluskey hits Frank Osikas. Osikas carries to the six. As the second quarter opens, Walt Grant sweeps wide. And then dives into the end zone for the score. The kick failed and Hybrid led six to nothing. Yale came right back on the arm of Ed McCarthy, here throwing to Bunky Carter. Dick Niglio makes the last two yards. The kick was good. Yale led seven to six. After a crimson punt, Paul Guzzi picks off a McCarthy aerial at the Yale 34. McCluskey reels off 14 yards on third down and nine yards to go from the Yale 33. Four plays later, he sprints into pay dirt. Putting Hybrid ahead, 12 to seven. A try for two points failed. The Crimson seemed to have stopped Yale after the kickoff, but a bobbled center pass works for the Eli. Harvard held again, but the Yale punt rolled dead on the three, where a harried automatic results in a fumble. Everybody has dropped off to defend against a pass. So Ed McCarthy runs it in. And Yale went to the locker room with a 14 to 12 lead. Yale roared down the field with the second half kickoff, but Jim Driscoll and John Hoffman dropped the Yale quarterback on fourth and two. Dan Yastrzemski gets a drive started right back with a 20-yard power drive up the middle, but a subsequent field goal try missed. With Yale still ahead in the fourth quarter, Bobby Leo uncorks the finest run of a fine afternoon. Hybrid led, 18 to 14.
the hybrid defense stopped the Bulldogs cold from then on. Paul Guzzi snags a Yale fumble. The season ends with Hybrid in possession on the Yale 10. Thus, Hybrid finished on the upswing with the promise of more thrills and more success in 1965. We'll see you then with more Crimson Football Highlights. football team missed the Ivy title in 1965 but the Crimson turned in another successful season as coach John Yavison celebrated his ninth year on the scene with a 5-2-2 two two record. For the seventh consecutive year Harvard finished in the Ivy League's first division and had a winning record for the campaign. Yavison's victory over Yale in the final game was his sixth making him Harvard's most successful coach in history against the Eli. The Crimson, led by a superb senior class, overcame a series of disappointments and kept coming back to make the season a good one. Now, let's take a look at the highlights. Harvard opened the season on the upbeat, entertaining local rival Holy Cross. The Crimson used the stubborn defense which has characterized coach John Yavison's teams at Cambridge, a great effort by halfback Bobby Leo, and a green offensive line to post a decisive victory. Junior halfback Bobby Leo gained 145 yards and 25 carries against the Crusaders. Watch him go for 24 yards behind the block by Tom Choquette. Early in the second quarter, Brian Flatley went to the air for Holy Cross, but Dave Poe grabbed it off for Harvard. Harvard couldn't get moving, though, so Harry Van Uden Allen had to kick. A perfect coffin corner punt to the Holy Cross, eight. On the next play, Holy Cross fumbled, and Jim Driscoll pounced on the ball for Harvard. Three plays from the nine found the ball at the four, so Maury DeLay came in for the field goal, and Harvard led three to nothing. Holy Cross threatened with a long drive at the end of the half, but the second of Dave Poe's three interceptions stopped the Crusader. An interception in the third quarter gave Holy Cross field position, and this time a pass to Dahlstrom from the 18 clicked for the score. Holy Cross, seven. Harvard, three. Harvard caught fire with John Shevlin at quarterback in the fourth quarter. Tom Choquette makes a big third down play to keep the drive going. From the Holy Cross 13, Bobby Leo cut off right tackle and went in to score. Harvard 10, Holy Cross 7. The Crimson defense kept the pressure on. A Holy Cross fumble on their own 33 was covered by Dick Burdick. Bobby Leo did the heavy duty on this drive. Here he slashes for a first down. From the four, Leo capped the drive with his second touchdown of the day. Final, Harvard 17, Holy Cross 7. Tufts, the next door neighbor from Medford, was the second non-league victim of Harvard power. The Crimson was able to use a variety of running backs as the defense spent a happy afternoon stealing the ball. On the first play from scrimmage, the defense forced a fumble. Dave Poe recovered for Harvard. Junior fullback Tom Choquette burst over from the nine and the route was underway. Harvard seven, Tufts nothing. 
Tufts fumbled again, deep in Harvard territory, and Jim Driscoll recovered. Senior Wally Grant broke through left guard to take the ball deep into Jumbo territory. And just as the second quarter began, Grant went over from the one. Harvard 14, Tufts nothing. On the next series of plays, Tufts couldn't move. A bad center pass gave Harvard the ball. And John McCuskey made the last half yard on a keeper. Harvard 20, Tufts nothing. Harvard was on the move again in the third quarter. John McCuskey to sophomore Don Sadowski. Tom Choquette got the touchdown off right tackle from the three. Harvard, 27, Tufts, nothing. In the fourth quarter, Bill Cobb broke up a Tufts fourth down play. And on the next play, Sam Robinson went around the left side, turned on the steam, and went 89 yards. But a penalty nullified the play. Harvard closed out the scoring when John Shevlin went back to pass, saw an opening, and ran 45 yards for the touchdown. Final, Harvard, 33. Tufts, nothing. The Ivy season opened with Columbia visiting the stadium. John Harvard's trusty blunderbuss caught the lion right between the eyes. The defense throttled the New Yorkers with grim efficiency, and the Crimson ground game rolled up the points. In the first quarter, Bill Cobb blocked the Lion punt, and Bob Welch recovered. Bobby Leo covered the last yard off right tackle. Harvard, seven, Columbia, nothing. John McCluskey got the Crimson started again with a pass to Bobby Leo. Then Wally Grant got a block from Maury DeLay on the draw play and raced 65 yards to score. Harvard, 14, Columbia, nothing. In the third quarter, the defense forced another fumble and Captain Ken Boyder recovered on the Columbia 22. Tom Choquette galloped up the middle to the eight. One play later, Wally Grant cut off left tackle and scored untouched. Final score, Harvard 21, Columbia 6. Next, Harvard traveled to Cornell for a clash of power in the line. The big red defense was strong, the Harvard defenders immense. Battle raged in the trenches all afternoon and both teams suffered blows to their Ivy hopes in a desperately fought tie. Early in the first quarter, Bill Cobb intercepted a Cornell pass and was stopped at the Cornell 36. John McCluskey got nine yards on a pass to Dan Calderwood. But the drive stole. McCluskey's pass went incomplete. An offensive interference was called against Harvard. Jim Babcock's field goal attempt from the 42 was wide to the left and short. Harvard got the ball back and McCluskey's pass to Bobby Leo gave Harvard first down on the Cornell 20. But two more yards was all the Crimson could get. So Maury DeLay tried a field goal from the 26, and it was good. Harvard, three. Cornell, nothing. Cornell cranked up a long drive with the ensuing kickoff. Larson penetrates Crimson territory on a 26-yard sweep. A 
third down halfback pass by Larson was broken up by Dave Poe as the second quarter began. Cornell tried the field goal, and Zogby's kick was good. Harvard, three. Cornell, three. Neither team could move until Dave Poe's kick return got Harvard fired up in the fourth quarter. Bobby Leo on the halfback pass found Dan Calderwood for 15 yards. But Harvard couldn't make the big play again and delays missed field goal attempt with the Crimson's last gasp. Cornell made one last stab at victory as time ran out, but Zogby's kick failed. Final, Harvard three, Cornell three. The Crimson returned to Cambridge to dig in against the approach of a Dartmouth team destined to go undefeated and to win recognition as the best in the East. Harvard's defense gave the Big Green their roughest afternoon of the season, but the Crimson offense couldn't buy a break, and a great effort fell short. Gene Reisowitz served notice that Dartmouth was in town again on the first play from scrimmage. 36 yards from the Dartmouth 20. From the Harvard 19, Reisowitz faked a pass and kept to the Harvard 8. But the defense stiffened. Dave Davis threw Walton for a loss on fourth and one. But Harvard fumbled the ball away at its own five, and Beard got the score for Dartmouth. Dartmouth, seven. Harvard, nothing. Dartmouth struck again in the second quarter. Reisowitz, the halfback pass to Klungness for 31 yards. On the next play, Klungness got the pitch out, cut back, and scored. Dartmouth, 14, Harvard, nothing. Harvard struck back on a 33-yard run with an interception by Bill Cobb. The running game was working up the middle. Bobby Leo for four yards. Tom Choquette ripped off another four yards, and it was third and two to go. Third and two on the Dartmouth nine. Leo got the yardage, but an offside penalty ended the drive. Late in the third quarter, Cobb gave Harvard field position again with an interception. Husky. Off left tackle for five yards. Leo through right guard for five yards more. Fourth quarter, third and six on the Dartmouth 10. Wally Grant for five yards. Fourth and goal. Tom Choquette dives into pay dirt. But he fumbled. Final. Dartmouth 14. Harvard nothing. The pen jinx hit again when Harvard met the Quakers in Philadelphia. The Crimson, still recovering from the struggle with Dartmouth, fell a victim to pen opportunism and a referee's mistake on a kicked fumble. A fumble on Harvard's first play of pen this chance. Wisniewski on a fake field goal. Pass to Smith for the score. 10, 7, Harvard, nothing. Harvard bounced right back. McCluskey got the drive going with a seven-yard gain.
Bobby Leo went around right end for 18 yards and a first down. McCluskey got eight yards and a first down at the pen five. Tom Choquette smashed over the middle to score, and it was Harvard seven, Penn seven. Dave Poe gave Harvard another opportunity in the second quarter with a 38-yard run back. Delay's field goal try was blocked. Then kicked by a Penn player and recovered at the Harvard 33. Henderson's kick turned this break into three points. Penn 10, Harvard 7 at the half. Harvard stormed back in the third quarter. McCluskey to Grant for 19 yards. Bobby Leo ripped off 13 yards, but Penn stiffened and the field goal attempt failed. A partially blocked punt gave Harvard another chance. Bobby Leo penetrated into Penn territory. The fourth quarter opened with a Harvard fourth and three on the Penn 11, but Wally Grant couldn't make the first down. The Crimson got the ball back though, and Bobby Leo lugged it into field goal position. Delay's attempt barely made it. Harvard 10, Penn 10. Dave Poe's interception in the waning minutes of the game gave Harvard its last chance. Jim Babcock's kick on the last play of the game failed, and the score stood. Harvard 10, Penn 10. The Tiger came to town, sporting a highly touted team and the longest undefeated string in the East. Captain Ken Boyd's defenders did themselves proud, but Princeton was stingy too. A close game lost to a great team. Princeton opened the hostilities with a field goal try by Charlie Gogolak, which failed. But then the Tiger rode the passing of Ron Landeck deep into Crimson territory. And Kerstetter bucked over for the touchdown from the one. Princeton seven, Harvard nothing. Harvard roared back after the kickoff. Bobby Leo for 15 yards. Wally Grant took a pitch out and galloped 14 yards into Princeton territory, but a fumble killed the drive on the 30. Princeton drove at the Harvard goal again in the second quarter. Landek passed to Cash Dollar. Landek lugged it over from the two himself. Harvard nothing.
Harvard got fired up again in the third quarter. Bobby Leo started on third and ten from the Harvard 20. Wally Grant slammed into Princeton territory. Grant again, nine yards to the 34. A holding penalty moved the ball to the 12. Grant sliced off seven more to the five. Leo finished off the 80 yard drive, breaking through right guard for the score. Princeton 14, Harvard six. Harvard was moving again in the fourth quarter. Bobby Leo for 10 yards. But the drive failed as Don Sadowski overthrew Wally Grant from beyond the line of scrimmage. Princeton controlled the ball for the rest of the game. Princeton 14, Harvard 6. Harvard bounced back from disappointment against erratic but dangerous Brown at Providence. Seniors Wally Grant and John McCluskey sparked the offense. The defenders were as miserly as usual, and another Ivy victory was neatly stowed away. The Crimson defense opened up hard on Bob Hall. Skips Fiocla on the tackle. In the second quarter, Wally Grant went into high gear. A block by Roger Novak shook him loose for 43 yards. Three plays later, Grant dashed into pay dirt from the 32. Harvard, seven, Brown, nothing. John Dockery picked off a hall pass in Bruin territory. On the next play, John McCluskey hit Carter Lord for the touchdown. Harvard, 14, Brown, nothing. Brown penetrated deep at the end of the half. Hall to Olson. But a great play by John Dockery on the attempted halfback pass saved a score. Brown came out fast in the third quarter. Hall on a keeper to the Harvard four. The Crimson defense refused to budge. Carr stopped at the two. Hall stopped at the one. Fowler knocked back to the two. Carr on fourth down, belted at the line of scrimmage. Late in the third quarter, Dave Davis grabbed off a hole pass and returned it to the nine. Brown held tight, so Laurie DeLay kicked the field goal. Brown scored in the fourth quarter. Final score, Harvard 17, Brown 8. The long season faded into the background as time for the game rolled around again. Third place in the Ivies and Coach Jarvison's string of winning seasons hung in the balance and the Crimson went after them with fire and determination. Game-long defensive heroics and a scoring burst in the second half forged a joyful finish to another colorful and exciting year of Ivy League football. The game opened on a frightening note. Fisher with a kickoff to the Harvard 36. The Harvard defense took the ball away on downs. Barrow tackled by Skips Fiocla. Yale threatened again in the first quarter. Humphrey to Kenny. Groninger for six yards to the 19. But Humphrey made one more yard to the 18, and that was as close as they got all afternoon. Bagel came in to try the field goal and missed.
Yale was rolling in high gear in the third quarter when Buzz Baker picked off a Yale pass. Harvard was almost stalled when Bobby Leo broke away on third and ten. John McCluskey got 16 big yards on third and five. Tom Choquette slammed into the middle for five yards. Wally Grant on a beautiful cut to the 10. Grant again to the 4. Bobby Leo finished off the 81-yard march around right end to score. Harvard seven, Yale nothing. Harvard kept the pressure on. Jim Driscoll broke through to nail Humphrey. Two plays later, Dave Poe intercepted a Yale pass and carried to the 12. Tom Choquette took personal charge of the remaining yards to the goal line as the fourth quarter opened. On his fourth crack, he went in from the one. Harvard, 13, Yale, nothing. The Crimson kept right on coming. McCluskey to Leo for 17 yards. McCluskey went around the left side and pitched to Choquette at the last minute. But this time, the Crimson ran out of gas. Delay's field goal try was wide. The final score, Harvard 13, Yale nothing.